Welcome to the highest resolution. My first guest today is Alonza Mitchell. Uh, thanks for being here, first yes, of all. Yes, I appreciate sir. you coming all the way out. Um, he has a lot of accolades. He has been published in magazines like El Arabia, Cosmopolitan, I'm sorry, Cosmopolitan Bulgaria, and he's also been able to take his first flight, been able to open up new doors for him, like working at the Stellar Awards and the Dove Awards. And he's also been able to become more business minded in his endeavors. Um, and starting off, you are a photographer and a videographer. Yeah, so I really, I started photography first. I started photography in 2017. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to school. I didn't go to school for photography. I went to school for acting, but in that, season i was like eh, i don't know what if this is something i want to do i want to continue so i was like in a crisis and there's a guy in my hall who did photography and we just became good friends and started hanging out and at first i wanted to be in front of the camera yeah you know because of acting and stuff like that so we we're taking pictures but then i was like mm, let me see what's going on behind this camera and yeah. like january 22nd 2017 i got my first camera and from there everything took off yeah yeah I think I'd, I'd, I've actually never met you until today, but I knew of you because I knew a bunch of like uh, graduation photographers and everything yeah, at ECU. Yeah, yeah. And um, I know you've worked with like several people that I know, is, Tay most notably, I know you worked with, yeah. uh, with Tay on some photos. Good friend of mine. Um, and yeah, firstly, also, I got to apologize to you because <laughs> I did what people have done to me now and I'm like, I get it. Huh? I asked you about photography, you told me the prices and I was like, uh, and then I just didn't, I didn't respond. Where? Like, yeah, so Where? I'm gonna apologize for that because it's, you know, I've I've reaped that now. Like someone gotcha. last week was like, yo, what you pricing for this, man? And I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be the price and everything, you interested? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. it's like, nah, man. I didn't hear nothing back. So, man. you know, I that's just wanna, good. yeah, I just wanna apologize that's for all that. Good, was, but yeah, that's incredible. So what like, I know you said you had a friend that was already into it and you that kind of led you to it, but what drew you about photography that made it like, this really interests me that I want to do it? So when I first started, it was just something that like, just being able to create like whatever you want. Yeah. Like for me, it was a creative side, being able to create whatever you want. Like, and I was also like really good at editing, like right off the bat, yeah. I downloaded Lightroom yeah. and just seeing some of those edits on the, on the photos it really i was like wow okay this is something i want to get into so like what we did like me and my friend we, we just went out and shot whatever we could shoot we yeah. were shooting every day with train tracks going around the ecu campus yeah. shooting whatever we could get our hands on we were just taking pictures of so that just really inspired me and then from there i started to collaborate with friends and mm -hmm. different things like that so yeah, yeah. it really just drew my interest on the creative side yeah that, that's dope and that's that's like telling that like god gifted you towards something when like there's a part of it that's like this comes easy yeah because i know i'm not meant specifically for photos because i'll be hitting auto on lightroom just to, <laughs> it's got so many controls i'm just like man i don't know really where to start like i feel like i, I could take a decent photo but when it comes to the editing part i'm just like ah i'm i'm not really nah, sure i'm gonna let the so photographers kind of handle that portion of it so when did you know like this became less of like something that was like a hobby or something that's more of like oh this is like my career so from this is how the money making process started mm -hmm. um i had a friend who was like hey i can't do this graduation session can you do it mm -hmm. so i was like okay cool so i'm messaging the person and with the whole money making process i really had to find out my self-worth yeah. when it comes to it because I feel like every creative has gone through yeah. it where it's like you charging this price and then it's like you know I don't know I feel like every creative has gone through that process yeah. but um I really had to just learn okay I really just had to dive in and say okay this is something I want to do serious I want to take this full time and from that evaluate my self-worth and I have a long story about that as well but uh, eventually it became something where it's like, okay, I'm making a little bit more money on a consistent basis mm -hmm. and it's something I want to do more full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that's very true what you said about creatives, like, because you don't want to, I think it's like a twofold thing. One, like you don't really fully know the, um, the value of what you're doing. And then sometimes when you start out with friends and family, yeah. you feel like, like I did, I did an interview for like, I did for like 
three hundred dollars like a few yeah. a few months ago, and after I finished it, I was like, never again. Yeah. Like at least twice as much. Like, and you kind of undervalue yourself, you know, yeah. when you do that. So, was it like did it take a lot of time for you to kind of learn the pricing structure and stuff? So I'll give you a gist of how it started. So from that shoot, I did that graduation shoot for like twenty five dollars. Seriously, because I didn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, it's like. How much would you charge me? Yeah. I don't know, 20, 25. And I gave him 50 photos. After a while, my, yeah. like, you know, from there, people were like, yo, I want to book this guy because, yeah. like, you know, he's gifted at what he does and mm -hmm. he's, he's cheap. So I'm starting to get all these bookings. I'm like, I can't keep doing this for $25. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. not the way. So I'm like, okay, 75. And then mm -hmm. I had some people fall off. They're yeah. like, okay, I don't, that's too much for me. Yeah. Um, your pricing is too a little too high. So like mm -hmm. balancing, like, okay, this is how much people considered that they would pay, and then knowing myself work that I'm more than this, I'm like, okay, seventy five, that's not really cutting it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay, I, you know, I'm like, all right, let me try a hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay, you know, I had some people fall off, and more people came, but it's like, you know, I had to evaluate my own self worth and see that, okay. I'm presenting a quality service yeah. and and making sure that the client's good. So like from there it's just been an ongoing thing of like learning my own self worth. Yeah. What what is Alonzo worth? Like yeah. when it comes to this gift. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is one of like your biggest like inspirations when you are like I guess trying to be creative, but mm -hmm. even like not when you're trying, like sometimes inspiration can come and you weren't expecting it and you get inspired to create something. Yeah. What would you say inspires you? So when it comes to like inspiration, I pull inspiration from like a lot of different places. Yeah. Um, one of the people that I'm really personally inspired by, like when it comes to like fashion photography and diff different things like that mm -hmm. is a lady named Lindsay Adler. She's mm -hmm. really dope. She teaches photography. She is just an amazing like photographer and mm -hmm. like ed educator all around yeah um as well as a whole bunch of other people the list can go on when it comes to inspiration but um yeah that's kind of where i pull inspiration from yeah, yeah. that's dope like I'm, just different things in general yeah just like does it do you ever have to feel like you have to get yourself out of a slump or are there times or no is it pretty much just kind of constant with you so i would say there are times where it's like you hit a creative block. Yeah. You know, times where it's just like, all right, what is, in, how do I get to the next step of like creative, like creatively, how do I get to the next step? Mm -hmm. So it is one of those times where it's like, all right, just go back to your basics. The yeah. basics is just go out and shoot. Yeah. You know, so there's times where it's like, okay, let me just push myself to create, find mm -hmm. something to create. Let me go to the dollar store and find this object and make it fashion. Yeah. Let me go and shoot outside like I used to. Do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just finding different ways to get out of that creative slump. Yeah, that's, that's dope. I think, do you ever find it interesting how like, when you had less resources that like sparked your creativity a little bit more? I feel like when I was in Greenville, mm -hmm. because we didn't have the studio, because we didn't have anything but outside, yeah. I feel like like that was some of my funnest work yeah. that I've done, like personally, because it's just me, a camera, and a subject. Yeah. Hey, let's go over here to this bush and make it look good. Yeah. Let's go over here to this to downtown Greenville and, and create something really dope. Yeah. So I really, I do feel like having limited resources does make you more creative. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can agree to that. Cause yeah. the only reason I'm not doing like a like a cross key lighting things, cause this is a lot cheaper. <laughs> like it's it's a lot more inexpensive, and so it just you know kind of spawned out of that. But that's that's really dope. How have have you been able to get like mentors to teach you your craft, or have you mostly been like self taught and YouTube and like e courses like that? So first, I would for sure say YouTube University. Yeah. YouTube University has taught me majority of everything that I know. Yeah. But along the way, I've had, had different people that have kind of just put me under, like, you know, hey, let me show you the ropes. Um, one name is uh, Tim, Tim Browser. Mm -hmm. Like, he's helped me when it came to, like, studio photography, yeah. helping me to understand lighting. Another woman is, her name is Laura. Mm -hmm. um, she helped me with, hey, Alonzo, you need to charge your worth. Yeah. No more 150 yeah. here and there. Hey, I want like your work is good. I want you to charge your worth. Yeah. So 
her helping me out with, hey, I have this client. I'm about to charge them this price, and what do you think? Alonzo, what? Yeah. I'm charging that for one photo. I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So along the way, I have had people that have inspired me and lifted me up and continue to encourage me throughout this journey. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting, The um, what you said about her telling you about the price and everything. I work with, I, I've like done Second Shooter and like edited for um, a wedding filmmaker uh, near my church, and he was like, don't you ever do anything for like a hundred dollars like anymore like if you already the effort it takes to come out there to set up to film even if it's up for something short it's like it's worth way more than that and he said when he started charging more for his wedding films he got a better like type of clientele like they were less I guess you could say aggravating Mm -hmm. you know they were like they were actually easier to deal with than the people that you know uh, were paying for the the cheaper films because they probably didn't have a whole lot of money to begin with to spend on this, mm-hmm. so it can be very nitpicky on it. But when they got a lot to spend on it, they're like, "Oh yeah, that looks great. Oh, that's fine. It's, it looks good." And I think that uh, that saying is true. Like the higher paying the client, like mm-hmm. it is easier. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then the person that may not be paying that price. Yeah, um, and I can say that from experience as well. The the person who is paying higher. You're giving all the details. It's like, all right, write the check versus a person yep. like <laughs> that doesn't have it all the way together. They're like, it's, it's a lot more going on in yeah. the picture. So I definitely would agree. Yeah. What would you say drew you to like fashion photography specifically? That's not, I don't. From the people I know, it's not like the most like common like niche that people want to go into when it comes to photography. Mm-hmm. What about that like drew you to it? So one of the things that I love about fashion photography, I feel like. I'm a portrait photographer first. Mm -hmm. I love connecting with people and interacting with people. But put that along with clothes and being able to just style a person, being able to just have creative range with, you know, the person, connecting with the person, and Mm -hmm. then the clothing. I feel like all that together just embodied who I want to be as a photographer. So it just something that intrigued me. I'm like, okay, this is like there's real estate, there's different yeah, uh, different genres. I was like, okay, I don't want to do that. I've done that. Weddings, okay. Yeah. But something about just being able to connect with people in clothing mm. just intrigues me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's dope. I think that's that's really interesting. And it like, I feel like it separates you. Like the fact that not only that you specialize in that, but that you have had experience doing those other things. Yeah. Like you're a versatile photographer, and so even when opportunities are like ones you aren't used to come up, mm-hmm. like you have the flexibility to know like, I could probably do that. Like yeah, I've, I've yeah. been flexible in these situations. Um, you work with the the Stellar and the Dove Awards. What was like that experience like? like? Cause I know you listen to a lot of gospel music. So to see people that like, you know, you listen to on like a regular basis to get to like actually work with them and to like, produce content to like share like their ministry what what was that like so i'm gonna take you back i'm gonna tell you like the full story so first it's god yeah when i say it's god is it is not me yeah i moved down here may june of last year yeah and then from there i moved to the apartment like my before apartment Mm -hmm. and at the time I like you know just moving and stuff like that I had to pick up another job Mm -hmm. so I was like okay guy I know you don't have me at this job forever yeah so I'm gonna steward this Mm -hmm. but I know that you have something greater for me Mm -hmm. so it came around December time and I just felt God say all right it's time to put in your two weeks but before that I felt led to read two books Mm -hmm. One is Crazy Faith by Michael Todd. Yep. And another one is Atomic Habits. Mm-hmm. And what I feel like those two books prepared me for, Atomic Habits put in place the different habits. Hey, you have to create, Alonzo, I want you to create new habits, things that are going to help you to enjoy the things I have for you later, mm-hmm. but it has to be in habits. Mm-hmm. And then Crazy Faith helped me to have the faith for the things that were to come. Yeah. So after I read those two books, I felt God say, all right, it's time for you to put in your two weeks. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. December 1st, I put in my two weeks. I'm like, all right, God, what you got for me? Mm-hmm. So I told my family, I'm like, God's about to do something crazy. I know he is. Like, mm-hmm. he, th- this is not me. And they're like, okay, you know, we, we seen you do something. Go ahead, do your thing. Yeah. 
So I was talking to my girlfriend. I was like, if there's anything I can do, uh, I would want to do something in the movie movie industry. Mm -hmm. And again, this all leads up to the Stellars. Yeah. And she was like, okay, give some people a call. See what, you know, give some people a call that you've been in contact with and see what's up. So I was like, all right. I had like five people. Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's what I'm going to name them. Mm -hmm. So I give a person a call Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the last person Friday. I'm like, hey. You're going to record it. Oh, we good. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. I'm the time. <laughs> I, know, I know the time. <laughs> oh, oh, is yeah, good? good? You okay, good. cool. <laughs> yeah, you good. I know the record time. But I was like, hey. Um, hey, just, what's going on? I just want to see what's up with you. It's like, hey, I'm going to be in Raleigh in uh, the next couple of days. Let's meet for breakfast. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Not even mentioning anything. We get to breakfast and he's talking. He's like, hey, I actually have an opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. It's to do um, behind the scenes photos yeah. and like a little bit of PA work for a movie, yeah. like a short, short budget movie yeah. in Atlanta. So that happened January. Mm -hmm. And then like a little bit on in the month, I took my first like actual real business flight. Yeah. And from there, I feel like God has opened up so many doors. So from there... To the Stellars, I like God put me into the right rooms and the right relationship with people. Yeah. I work closely with um, another like company that mm -hmm. has helped me to like just be in these rooms. But overall, like it, I would say it's God, man. Yeah. Overall, it's God. I, when I look at today's January fifth, mm -hmm. I just dated the thing, but yeah. today's January fifth, and I, I look at like January fifth of last year. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't imagine like what has happened in this amount of time. Yeah, so it's it's only God, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to borrow some of that faith because um. <laughs> so uh, I'll be I felt and I'm hoping I'm right because you know mm -hmm. with faith you always hoping that yeah. hoping I'm right about this. Uh, I pretty much told like um, my my like branch where I work my full time job. Um, is closing down and they're merging with like a branch in Morrisville. And I, I the same uh, book you talk about. I, I listened to the audio book because um, I, I know about my time, but I didn't get the audio book. And I saw you posted it, and I was like, let me listen to the audio book because um, I got a lot of time driving, like on the work mm -hmm. and everything. And um, yeah, just listening to it, listening to make crazy face statements. And so probably like. June or July last year, I wrote on a board like my crazy face statement, like I'm gonna be self fully fully self employed by 26, which is April of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know I learned that my branch is closing down. I'm like, dang, like this could be like an opportunity that like God is opening up for me to step out on faith because I don't have everything lined up to where I'm gonna be perfectly fine just yeah. transitioning yeah. out of it. And I was like, I think this is like an opportunity to, to, to take a step out like on faith. And um, yeah, that's so that's been the plan. So I'm really just finishing out into the yeah. end of January and stepping out on that. And um, yeah, man, I'm just every day working like to, to like bolster my faith, to keep yeah. it going and everything. And think about remember when God did this, though, remember when he did this, how he's been faithful in man. this way. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's always I know God can get annoyed with us because it's like, didn't I just provide for you like this year? Like, yeah. last year this time, literally tomorrow, um, a year ago, like January 6th, mm -hmm. someone like just straight up gave me $500 like on top of my car. Yeah. And so I'm just like, dude, do you think God can't do all this other stuff if he can do something like as miraculous, as amazing as that? Why do you feel like he can do this, but he can't do all this, yeah. you know? And yeah. so... Yeah, I appreciate that, man, because yeah. I just, that helped me with my faith and just trusting that, like, he's giving you a vision and he's giving you provision. Mm -hmm. So if you know you're where, where you're called and you feel you're called to do it, like, step out on faith. And if I'm wrong, you can trust him to, like, realign you. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. So for you, where, what's, like, if you feel comfortable yeah. sharing, because I know uh, you can't always tell everybody your vision and what you're going for, but... Uh, for you, like, what's your vision going forward? Like, what's the, like, you know, where you want to be, like, five or ten years down the road? Five to ten years down the road? So, okay. Five to ten years down the road, I want to continue to build, like, my media company. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to have more of an impact when it comes to, like, photography and videography. Yeah. I I'll say that in that range. I feel like... There's still more that God has for me yeah. um, when it comes to photography, 
for sure, but as well as videography. Mm -hmm. So I want to just be able to have more of an impact. Yeah. So, yeah. Whatever, whatever that means, I'm like, all right, God. I, yeah, I you're going to leave it up to you. Yeah. I give it to you, but whatever that means, I feel like I just want to have more of an impact. Yeah, I think that's great that you have, like, the overall, like, I want to make an impact because I feel like that means God can be flexible with you mm -hmm. and you can be in a strange situation, but trust that well, making an impact, you know, even if it may not look like how you may have, like, necessarily pictured it because God can, like, always realign us and everything like that, so... Yeah. Yeah, man, I think that's that. That's incredible. What? Uh, I'm gonna check this out real quick. Uh, okay, cool. It's gonna be really organic. Uh, right, you cool, know, cool, cool. you know, it's it's don't gotta be like uber professional. Like you can't look at the camera or nothing. Um, so, man, what if you could say like your top two like most fun like experiences you've gotten? Anything like surreal? You like, yo, I cannot believe like this is happening to me right now. Like during 2022. Man. I really feel like God just blew my socks off when it came to 2022. Yeah. So I would definitely say the Stellars. Yeah. For sure. Just being able to walk in the the arena and just, just see everything. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. And also, as well as the Dubs. Yeah. Um, the Dubs, I got a chance to spend a little bit more time there and, like, like watch the show. You yeah. know what I'm saying? From, like, you know, the background. But yeah. Just being able to, like just you know if you take a second just look around like god yeah. this is this ain't me this is not me this yeah. is you like right. and like you can just kind of get emotional because i'm like all right god like like thank you you feel me yeah. so like those two will definitely be um some of the most like impactful for me yeah but i feel like there's so much more that has happened in yeah. in, in 2022 yeah um being able to work with uh, Major. Major, yeah. Yeah, being able to work with him and uh, help with some of this content. Um, the Todd Delaney live recording yeah. that um, I was able to be a part of when it came to like, you know, behind the scenes the video. Yeah. And yeah, just, just so many yeah. other amazing, like, impactful moments for me. Yeah. That's dope. I think it's, it's interesting how God can like humble you with a blessing mm -hmm. because you get to a point where it's like, like we read in the Bible about like God having to humble people, like remove them from position to be like, this was never you. Mm -hmm. But I think at times um, for me, I know like I got an opportunity. It's no possible way that I could have got it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, I'm really this weak. Like, you know, it humbles you in a way to like see how like great God is. So, yeah, man, I think that's I think that's incredible. Um, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna, you know, screenshot some of your photos on your site to, cool, to, cool, to cool, you know, cool. add some B-roll and stuff like that. But yeah, man, I, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, yeah, man, where are you? You taking bookings for this year? Yeah, so it's January. I'm officially open for bookings for 2023. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in fashion or any other uh, type of photography, just reach out. Yeah. Send me an email. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, thanks a lot, man. You know, I'll make sure to put your information in the lower thirds and everything like that but uh thanks a lot this is the highest resolution thank you again to lonza metro i appreciate you talking about me appreciate you cool i think that's it um, oh, it felt like we were cutting it close oh, 24 okay cool 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 oh yeah you go you still got six minutes okay